Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. There is a sweet anointing in There is a still in the atmosphere Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary, God is here. That's already a prophetic word for someone tonight. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary. God is here. For in the sanctuary. God is here. For in the sanctuary. God, you are here and we thank you. Change our lives tonight in the name of Jesus. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have a very serious word for us tonight. It's, it's actually an explanation where to start a new series but the spirit of god would not let me start a new series there is a key that i taught in this place that the lord wants me to teach it again because we need to understand it again and again the holy spirit kept pressing on my spirit that we ought to understand some mysteries must be taught again and again and again until our spirits pick them are we together the end of revelation is that we apply these truths and they produce results in our lives and so i'm going to be challenging us on that thought and then we will pray one of the greatest prayers you can pray as a believer is that the eyes of your understanding truly be enlightened are we together the eyes of your understanding is not intelligence the eyes of your understanding is not intellect the eyes of your understanding is not philosophical knowledge the eyes of your understanding is access to the mysteries of the spirit alongside their operation you can know that these mysteries exist you see revelation is not knowing what god has said 
revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life knowing what god has said is not revelation when you know how to make it work in your life he told job nowhere thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth amen it's important that when we come into god's presence we listen you will think that when people come into god's presence like this the fact that you are looking at me it doesn't mean you are listening are we together people can be distracted people can be careless some can be looking with their eyes open but they are sleeping are we together all kinds of things happen it was jesus himself that told us what happened to seeds some fall by the wayside correct seed correct sower some fall by the wayside some fall in the midst of thorns some fall on a rocky ground even among the good soils three kinds of results 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold may you be a hundred fold tonight in the name of jesus christ a day will come in your life where you would have sufficiently gained access to the mysteries of the kingdom alongside the keys that release their power and let me tell you when that time comes you will be nothing short of a wonder everybody around you will know that the finger of god is upon your life we make impact in this world through mysteries we make impact in this world not through desire it takes more than desire to make true impact for the kingdom i'll share a thought with us and then we'll walk on a scripture and then we'll pray hallelujah i shared with us here for those of us who were not here please listen attentively and by the way, those following us online, we love you, we honor you, you are part of us. That there are three platforms upon which impact is established. Please listen. When God is ready to reveal himself to a man, when God is ready to do business with a man upon the earth, there are only three platforms as revealed from scripture upon which that man will access capacity to make impact platform number one encounters don't forget this they are not cheap they are not basic at all encounters the first platform that grants a man access to work with god is encounter everybody say encounter encounters are very very important because they birth spiritual realities in our spirits by encounters i don't just mean visionary encounters even encounters through the word an experience that makes god real to you an experience that makes a dimension of god real to you it could be aided through a vision it could be aided through a supernatural experience but regardless of what platform it comes through any experience capable of making a dimension of God become real to you is called an encounter. True encounters produce conviction. Not memory, conviction. A true encounter, listen, it doesn't just leave you with a memory. It produces conviction. If you tell me you've had an encounter with a dimension of God, I will know. I don't care whether you claim you had a vision or a scripture opened up to you. When it is opened up to you, the first sign that you had an encounter is unusual conviction. It translates to faith. If God gives you an encounter of his healing power, it produces conviction. If God gives you an encounter of a dimension of spiritual reality, it must come with conviction. Say conviction. There are so many people in the body of Christ who are not convicted about the things they teach. It's one thing to teach from a theological standpoint, and that's important. It's one thing to teach from a sociological standpoint. 
but it's one thing to teach from a depth of conviction it's not by shouting it's not the volume of your voice it's not the the repetition of your grammar conviction is a realm where you're speaking your listeners know that the things you are saying are true with you say encounters we must crave for encounters you know people who don't really understand this thing think that all we are advocating is that people begin to have out of body experiences and they begin to propose as though you are telling people to not pay attention to the word of god to now begin to contend for angelic encounters heavenly encounters as above the word of god no the bible says god appeared um to samuel in shiloh by his word are we together he appeared by his word so an encounter doesn't necessarily mean until you see an angel and he says promise i was sent from heaven to you that from today you take the healing power of god to the nations and then every time you stand you say i remember what the angel said yes that's an encounter but there are men like reinhard bonke who had encounters they never had any visionary experience when you listen to reinhard bonke's story he will tell you that a day came they brought in a great man of god to preach the man preached the first day and told all the sick people to come by the second day and the morning of the second day reinhard bonke was excited because they were going to wheel all kinds of sick people in africa if you tell people to bring the sick they are obedient they will bring the sick whether they are related to them or not they will that sense of nationhood will kick in they will drag every sick person and so they brought those people and the preacher told reinhard bonke he said the lord told me to pack up my things and get out of this place you will preach and you will heal Renard Bonke said, no, 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 no. You can't be playing. I mean, you are the great man of God. I'm only here to encourage you. And he said, I'm sorry, I have to be on my way. Renard Bonke said he cried and cried because his ministry was about to be shredded into pieces. And then all of a sudden, that's an encounter. The word of the Lord comes. You don't read it. It comes. In the fifth day of the fifth month of this, the word of the Lord came. There's the one you try to get. But the one that comes... Is what produces encounter and Renard Bonke just looked and said Lord I will go and do the preaching and you will do the healing and that was it a man who has produced a ministry that has liberated Africa encounters you can be reading a scripture you can be reading John 3 16 but one day the word of the Lord will come to you for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him when that encounter comes you can sing songs like yes jesus loves me you sang it in sunday school it was not an encounter it was a recitation but when it comes as an encounter you will sing that song and you are crying and somebody looks at you and says ah, ah, you are deeper than this and he said that's the point it has not come to you but it came to me are we together encounters my life is a testimony of encounters I can point to you exact periods in my life where certain things happen that birthed certain convictions that have been responsible for releasing certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities may God give us encounters the meeting is called koinonia and the first thing you should get is an encounter if you are a prayer leader without an encounter a pastor without an encounter an apostle a prophet whatever you call yourself a time will come your lack of assurance will become evident to those you are leading are we together it's not by bold face bold face is not encounter i know god will show up please encounters produce convictions unto death but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded say god give me encounters say it again god give me encounters you believe god has called you into the ministry of kingdom wealth but you are not sure you don't have encounters 
So you are hoping you will be rich to prove to people that you were called into the ministry of kingdom financing. You lack encounters. Listen, an encounter makes your conviction as your primary evidence, not physical results. Your conviction becomes your primary evidence. So God can call you to the nations. As at the time you are speaking, the only other listener is your wife. But you still say, God called me to the nations. I love men of convictions. Conviction. Conviction. We, we live in a result-driven, a carnal result-driven generation where until you produce physical results that can be seen, people oftentimes will not believe you. So you will need encounters, let me tell you. So that when things do not happen the way you want, you are still left with your encounter. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I know him. The God in the mountain is still God in the valley. Let me tell you why many people gas out. Many pastors, many preachers. I've seen a lot of preachers say, God sent me to so, so, so city. When the city became too hot and whipped them, they left quietly. Encounters give you stamina. Encounters give you stamina. Encounters give you stamina. He said, if you turn aside in the day of battle, he said, your strength is small. One guy came and met me one time and he said, God has called him into the apostolic ministry. I said, congratulations. A few months later, it became too hot for him and he came back. He said, I get it now. I'm an evangelist. I said, go. I told him, I said, go for a retreat. A retreat that produces an encounter. Because he thought it's just in a name. Usually when it becomes too hot, people change. Persecution. <laughs> we think the name will give you access for preaching fast. So you say, I am prophet A and B and C. And then the heavy controversy that lands on your head, you quietly remove it. And say, I am pastor Joshua Selman. <laughs> Say encounters. May God give us encounters. Amen. One big secret in my life is that God used encounters to convince me of my call. Solid encounters. Both visionary encounters, word encounters, prophetic encounters. That's why no matter what anybody says or does, I will never even pray about it. That's how certain I am. When you try to explain things to people, you don't have conviction enough. Please talk to someone by your side and say, get conviction. Get conviction. Strong conviction. Are we together? Strong conviction. We doubt and we fall by the wayside. And we make a mess of... And you know, it's a terrible thing to brag so much before people. And then... You are now forced to defend your advocacy. But the encounter that will sponsor your confidence is not there. If I believe God has called me to carry the healing anointing and there are 100 wheelchairs and I pray for them and nobody gets healed, I tell them, may God bless you and uh, have a nice day. And I'll go to sleep. And someone says, but man of God, ah, it's either you are backsliding or something has happened. I will go back and challenge myself to rise greater. But I will not go back saying, God, if it's that I didn't hear you well, can you explain to me again? No. We're laughing, but I'm, I'm trusting that God is speaking to us. Encounters. Do you know that the world follows men of conviction? If I am a thief today, there is, a, there is a certainty about my stealing that will force you to say, look, this guy knows what he's doing. He's worth hearing. Terrorists are men of encounter and conviction. They have met spirits. The spirits told them certain things. So while the government is trying to advise them and say, why don't you become nice social beings? They say, all of you are confused and we are out to kill you and bomb you. And you say, are you sure you will do this? Yes. 
What of your life? What of your wife and your family? And they say to hell with them. Conviction from an encounter. What encounter do you have that sponsors your confidence? Oh, I saw God give a Jimmy this. It's not enough reason. You must have a personal encounter. We lack this a lot. I'm taking out time to help you understand this. We lack this a lot in the body of Christ. You can borrow Joshua Selman's revelation. Listen to one koinonia message and just write everything out. And preach in a conference. And say, God said there is this and that and that. But you know, there is a way people look through you. And they see that even you as you are preaching, you are just saying, Lord, I hope I'm right. I'm about to pray. Joshua Selman prayed after that message. And now I'm about to pray after my own. Then you stand and speak and say, I see angels everywhere. Whether or not you are seeing them. Because you thought I was lying. So now you say, I see angels. Overflow, are you ready? Say yes. No encounter. That's how preachers disgrace themselves. Convention after convention till everybody in your circle stops bringing you for meetings because you have a track record of copying with no results. Someone can guide you, but the ultimate journey is that you meet Christ. You meet him, not just theologically, but you have an encounter. Say amen. Amen. It's good to know the God of Joshua Selman. But stay until that God becomes your God. The people told the woman, the, the Samaritan woman, he said, we believe you now not just because you told us. We have seen him for ourselves. You came and introduced us, but ah, talking with him, he did something to us. In the name of Jesus, may God give us encounters over your business, over your life, over your family, so that when you go and you look at your CGPA and you look at it from 4.5, God forbid, but you drop to 3.5 and you see three carryovers, you don't suddenly say, ah, and God said, I'll be a leader. God, you must come and... You see, some prayers are are revelations of the doubts you've been nursing for many years so what you have feared secretly now comes upon you and you say god but you told me now you told me eh? you told me that this brother will marry me this one that he has done introduction what are you saying don't make noise until you have the burning bush experience we brag too much on hearsay I watch preachers talk sometimes and I'm saying, be careful though. Jesus is Lord, but his Lordship is exercised with wisdom and understanding. If you are not healed in this meeting, except I'm not called. Hey. At the end of the meeting, only two people are healed. Encounters. Encounters. I crave for them. I create the atmosphere for them. I desire them in my life. Encounters. It's not about reading the Bible, Genesis to Revelation. It's not about quoting scripture, as important as it is. It's not about a display of Greek and Hebrew words. Encounters produce convictions. Convictions produce faith. Faith moves mountains. It's not what you do. It's the conviction behind what you do. Number two, the second platform upon which men do business with God is a comprehension or access to the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. An encounter is one. You meet a person in an encounter but you must comprehend the principles of the kingdom is God helping us tonight your knowledge of the principles the working knowledge of the principles of the word of God is another platform for you to activate a life and a destiny of impact so what principles do you know it says and I will give you the keys right and whatsoever you bind 
on earth shall be bound in heaven king james says whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven amplified says whatever you allow whatever you disallow the power to release realities and the power to close doors is called the key of david your life there is a dimension of impact in your life hear me brothers and sisters that is a product of the mysteries that you know this is what i define as dominion you've heard me say it again and again dominion is not an impartation dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom we've spent this year as much as many other years dissecting these mysteries under the teaching secrets of the kingdom the series get it secrets of the kingdom right i taught you six mysteries that control mighty dramatic manifestations upon the earth mystery number one i taught you is the law of surrender the law of surrender that this is the mystery that holds the key to unusual amounts of unction upon the lives of people complete surrender complete surrender mystery number two is the power of a transformed mind for as he thinketh in his heart right so he's so he is i told you realities are first formed in the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical realm so you never try to change anything by physically trying to alter it you alter it from the realm of the spirit and it changes mystery number three is the law of competence seest thou a man diligent in his business he says he shall not stand before mean men he shall stand before kings are we together we we did this very very mystery number four i explained to you the secret of coming out of situations that are about to swallow you in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path that's what the bible says he said trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding a time must come in a man's life where you face challenges that are bigger than your current level of exposure you don't know anything about that challenge know how to go out at that time the key is to acknowledge him he says in all thy ways acknowledge him praise is a weapon for acknowledgement so as you begin to acknowledge him there is a promise attached he said he will make straight your path mystery number five is the mystery i call it the irrefutable mystery of destiny helpers men and women anointed commanded instructed to appear in your destiny and take you to the next level i'm doing a recap it, it, please i don't know how to plead with you believe what i'm teaching you and understand it and you will change your life there are three kinds of destiny helpers i shared with us the other time number one they are called divine connectors they do not have the ability to help you but they can link you to where your help is divine connectors number two men of influence they have the capacity both the economic power both the governmental power right the intellectual prowess to endorse you and open up doors for you an example of such a person is joseph of arimathea a man who through his influence jesus was ordered to come down from the cross and buried in a tomb you need them and then number three faithful men the third kind of destiny helpers faithful men 400 of these men came to david david was running he was a failure he was broke he was on his way ministry had packed up but 400 men came and they entered a covenant with themselves to be loyal to him until he became king and then the last mystery which in my opinion is the most powerful maybe secondary to only an encounter is the law of honor Hebrews 7 7 and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the greater 
I told you that there is a system in the body of Christ. Nobody blesses himself. You cannot lift yourself to a new dimension. Are we together? No matter how anointed you are, no matter how great you are, at every point in your life, there are people below you trusting God for your grace to lift them. There are people above you. There are those who already represent what your future aspirations are. And there are people who you represent their future aspiration. The recognition of that is the key to living where you are to the next level. You ignore the law of honor, you will pay for it dearly. You ignore the law of honor, you will pay for it dearly. There are human beings that represent systems. The recognition of what they represent alongside the possibilities God has opened unto them will bring you into their realm of reality. Honor is the key to access. Every time a door closes over your life, this honor closed it. And every time a door opens over you, honor opened it. So there are many other mysteries that we have to learn. I can teach you mystery upon mystery upon mystery. One of it is he that wants friends must first show himself friendly. Now you read these things as verses until God opens your eyes. Then you will see the reason why many people never have the gift of men because they are not friendly. To be friendly does not mean to be a clown. To be friendly means to be hospitable. Are we together? It says that you neglect not being hospitable for in it, many have entertained angels unaware. It was through hospitality Sarah trapped the angels and they gave a revelation about the inevitable doom of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it was on the strength of that hospitality that Abraham was given access to that mystery. And with it, he rescued Lot. Praise the Lord. The third platform upon which men receive from God and create lives of notable impact in the earth is covenant connection. Covenant connection. Covenant connection. May God make us believe what I'm sharing. May God make us believe it. May God make us believe it in the name of Jesus Christ. Covenant connection. The Bible speaking about men and describing the nature and the character of their success says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the, sin, the seat of the scornful. It says, but his delight... What is in the law of the Lord and on that law he meditates day and night. Then he says he shall be. This is how his success will be. In the similitude of that of a tree. If the Bible says you shall be like something, study that thing. It says the success of a believer will be like that of a tree. How does a tree rise? Number one, it is planted from the stem that rises branches begin to come all branches do not move in the same direction but regardless of their direction the strength of the branches are determined by the strength of the vine that they are connected to they may face different directions and the trees can grow so tall taller than buildings and the trees can stand for years and decades branches fall and rise they are pruned and they come again but the stem connected to the root remains intact any branch that cuts itself outside of the vine dies you don't water the branches you water the roots and it has a system are we together trying to pour water on leaves is a waste of time a system so he said he shall be like a tree listen our personal spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant please you have to understand this our personal work with god is based on relationship however kingdom advancement is based on covenants not the covenant of Moses 
not the covenant of the new testament i'm not talking old and new covenant a covenant is a system through which god guarantees a continuity of his program now listen listen look up please let me teach you this get it get it in the name of jesus christ the way the kingdom works is through the principle of covenant and alignment please listen so what happens is that every dispensation has a dimension of spiritual realities that they should experience which is part of the ongoing unfolding of the multifaceted dimension of god are we together so every dispensation has a dimension of god earmarked for them to experience but the nature and the character of that revelation is such that when god wants to come in in a dimension to a territory and a dispensation his first assignment is to find a man say a man when he finds a man he enters a personal covenant with that man that personal covenant becomes the platform upon which that dimension of god is revealed to the dispensation no other person will access that dimension in that dispensation out of alignment to the person in covenant with god are you getting what i'm saying yeah god will not reveal the same thing to everybody he will reveal the same thing to one person and direct every other person who wants to experience that part of him to align with the covenant that he has had upon that man or upon that system are we together the yardstick that he uses to bring men to that experience is called an election of grace it has nothing to do necessarily with their personal yieldedness it is part of his sovereignty and his predeterminate counsel so god calls men every time you are talking about redemption the journey of redemption and the doctrine of christ starts from abraham not noah not adam are we together whether it's christianity whatever kind of religion the moment they are communicating the doctrine of christ the genesis of the blueprint of the doctrine of christ starts from abraham god called one man to come out of a place called all of the chaldeans genesis chapter 12 right he wanted to use his father terror but something happened and he the, the you know the baton passed on to abraham and he called abraham an idol worshiper out of all of the chaldeans and he called him and he said look i am calling you out come out of your father's house your kindred and all of that and i will do certain things with you and abraham obeyed him there are so many people in the bible that represents god's covenant point there are portals that open their dispensation and their generations to certain dimensions of god that law did not die with the coming and the going of Jesus Christ. There are still men today that represent new dimensions of God or continuity of his program. Hmm. Are we together? Alongside your encounter, alongside your comprehension of the laws of the spirit, your covenant connection to men or systems that represent the continuity of god in that dimension but this is where satan cheats a lot of people please listen to me carefully this is something else i'm talking about but we need to understand this god asked me to reiterate these things you know why we honor men we honor men for many reasons number one is the anointing they carry number two the sacrifice that they have with god that has brought certain levels of possibilities in their life number three is the spiritual system that they represent when david wanted permission to fight goliath do you know the question saul asked he said whose son is this in other words i want to know the tribe he came from so that i know whether this can be possible this boy is too young i'm a king but I need to know where he's coming from so we can trace the history of the spiritual deposits God left with that tribe. And when they found out that David was of the Benjamites, he said, go and fight. David came to him and he said, Goliath, I know you think I'm a small boy, but there is a tribe standing before you, not a person. Watch what happens to you now. Goliath said, am I a dog? David said, we will see who, who is the dog. 
I have seen people in my life who never become billionaires, but they never lack whether they pray or not, even when they are not tithing. It's a covenant. There is something they are connected to, whether they know it or not, that affords them those spiritual possibilities. <sighs> Open our eyes, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I have seen pastors who when they stand to teach, you will almost sleep. But when they call upon the God of heaven, he shows up. It's not personal encounter. In fact, many of them may have a lot of character defaults. And while you are talking about their character, it's like God owes them his presence. They call him and he must show up. There is a covenant he respects. He says, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my mouth. Are we together? So some of our people, although they were in the village with witchcraft, they had 16 children, one woman, 16 children. And yet, after 16 children, the woman is still standing, her stomach is still as flat as an arrow. You wonder whether the children grew in a basket. It's a covenant. Brothers and sisters, it's not about knowing what drug to take. Some things are spiritual. When they are spiritual, they show and you see it. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Hmm. Oh, you better believe it. So that when you look at a man, you know that not every result you see was initiated by his personal altar. When you know that, there will be no room for pride when God begins to give you results. Because you will know that certain dimensions of your result are purely an issue of alignment. Purely an issue of what? Alignment. Spiritual alignment. There was a time, for instance, in living faith, it still happens, where there were strange testimonies, 2005, 2006, creative, those ones were, it's what the Bible calls the walking of miracles, not testimonies, where a man would tell you, I was a cleaner, and by Sunday, the owner of the company said he's leaving Nigeria, and they made me a CEO. Strange testimonies. So you see somebody who drag himself and he's sleeping while they are preaching. Sleeping. They say in Jesus' name, he never says amen. He's even angry. But something still came on him. With the anger, he turns and he leaves and goes back and the landlord says, you are staying five years in this house. The rent is, is free. And the man says, I don't understand what is happening to me. Two weeks later, they call him and say, there is a job we want to give you. And he says, I don't understand. There is a covenant. When God looks at you, he sees the covenant. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. If you know this thing I'm teaching you, you can, you can make, it's not a license to sin. You can make the worst blunder on earth. Quarter to shame. The covenant kicks in. And God says, I remember. <sighs> Jonah! Jonah was running as a rebel. But God used what happened to describe what will happen to Jesus. Jonah! He says the same way Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Was that a good testimony? Yet yeah, Jesus used it. God had Solomon for the sake of his father, David. When Solomon dedicated the temple, he lifted the temple and he said, Lord, I enter a covenant with you that whoever faces this temple and pray, whether their faith level is there or not, hearken to them. So in the days of Daniel, they signed a policy and they said nobody should pray. Daniel knew that if he will use his personal faith, he's a human being. The truth about it is that it was not just his personal spiritual life. So he opened the window to Jerusalem and he started praying. And listen, that was why he was sure when they were about to throw him in the lion's den. God did not show up because of Daniel. He showed up because of the covenant. Mm. 
What have you enjoyed in your life because of covenant connection? Some of us, every good thing that has happened to you has come because of your, your personal push, which is good. But brothers and sisters, the demand that life will place on you will be greater than your spiritual life. And if you have to wait till you become strong, you may not even live for that to happen. There are people in Koinonia here, they are not tightening, but they are having strange results. They, even them, they are doubting, they are saying, what's wrong? Something is covering you. It's a covenant. Break every chain. Break every chain. Those who know this do business with God upon the earth and open strange doors. Strange doors. Strange doors. Living faith, redeemed, and MFM. There are three ministries that have seen them with such a strange covenant of, of ownership. They can enter any land regardless of the vow the government made not to give them land. They must give them land as much as they want. It's a revelation. Are we together? Brothers and sisters, some things are not just about fasting and prayer. There is an advantage God placed in the body. And if you are not aware of it, you may never step into certain dimensions. Never step into certain dimensions. I came to show you certain things. God said I should teach it again. If God says I should teach it, it means many of us did not get it. There are certain things in my life I will, I will never suffer and struggle over. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that foolish. I am not that foolish. You see, it's a painful thing when you are suffering certain things that is available by covenant to the tribe you belong to. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Elijah was a man who had a covenant with God that represented the system of the prophetic and the apostolic. He had other sons called the sons of the prophet. Is that true? But he had a strange man who was a farmer called Elisha. Elisha was not a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. He casted his mantle upon him and Elisha started following him. Join other prophets. Listen. And then the Bible says a time came when Elijah, Elijah was about to go to heaven. Is that a normal human being? Is that how you go to heaven? But that's how he went to heaven. That's how you know that it's not a normal human being. He knew where the gate of heaven was beyond the Jordan. He said, I'm about to leave. He knew where to wait for the chariots. Ah. A man was taking fresh air on a mountain and they came to harass him. He used one of the elements of the supernatural called fire. He said, I will not just use my mouth. If I be a man of God, let fire come from heaven. He prayed once and fire came. Is that how you pray when you stand? Look at what... He, hi. Koinonia, hear what I'm teaching you. Listen. When they were about to judge the prophets of Baal, there are some dimensions of witchcraft that is your covenant of connection that dislodges them. Not just your personal prayer and fasting. When the prophets of Baal were there, they were prophets under the custody of Jezebel. And look at the mockery. Elijah said, laugh. He said, he said, cut yourself, shout. Maybe your God is sleeping. Look, if I am Elijah, I will be fasting. <laughs> Deliver me, oh God. Wipe my tears. For the sake of your glory, I will be writing out the worship songs, looking for somebody to play a cymbal. But here was a man crossing his leg and mocking at them. From morning till evening, he laughed because he knew they were wasting their time. After everything, they caught themselves so that their God will see blood. And remember their covenant with him. When they tried singing and praising and it did not work. They danced around the prophets of Baal. They started bringing blood. What is blood? The covenant. Baal, remember our covenant as prophets with you. And Elijah shut the heavens and said, keep calling on him. Then when it was time for Elijah, I thought Elijah would have just said, all right, God, fire, come down. He would have been surprised. He said, give me 12 stones. 12 stones. Listen, listen, 
let me teach you something the bible says in the new jerusalem it said the gates of the city there were 12 gates and the gates had a name of the 12 tribes of israel every one of those tribes represented a dimension of god and 12 foundations having the name of the apostles he said give me 12 stones and the prophets of Baal were watching after it he put a sacrifice and then he said pour water the water was a mystery he was not just trying to say so that you don't think i hit fire because there are three forces that open the gates in this earth realm the spirit the water and the blood so he said pour water afterwards he lifted his eyes to the heaven the pattern was correct follow me and he said oh god and the fire the bible said the fire came licked the sacrifice and swept everything right and then hear what he said the moment that happened he said pursue all the prophets of Baal. don't let one escape and kill them hear me people of god there are dimensions there are kinds of mountains that were never designed to be approached alone we fool ourselves thinking because we know god every mountain will just go like that it's all things are possible but they are they are possible based on the knowledge available to you if you can see me as i'm going you will have something the moment he left and he held the mantle he would have gone to the well and say i am a man of god part he would have been surprised he said where is the lord god as far as god was concerned he did not see elisha he saw the covenant did the water obey absolutely do you know why joshua was successful god transferred a mystery to him as i was with moses as i was the way i related with him so i will relate with you he said and because of that no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life so when the angel appeared joshua removed his knife and he was going to kill the angel the angel had to explain he would have died the word of god would have killed the angel not the sword of joshua he said are you for us or against us and the angel said hold on neither he had to explain because a man was running with the word of god the bible says for instance it says where two or three are gathered where in my name the meaning is as touching my authority there is a dimension of god that only shows up under corporate fellowship you will never have that dimension alone in your room fast for 100 days you will not see those things that was why the psalmist was crying he said early will i seek you he said to see your power and your glory in my life as i have seen in the sanctuary there's something i've seen that only happens when believers gather i've not seen it can you make it happen in my life hallelujah he says if two of you shall agree hold my hand said Jimmy, as touching anything there are certain levels of prayer that is not just about i am alone the veil has been torn I, I'm, I'm alone i can access christ it's a system there are certain levels of difficulty that when two or three agree you can just say one prayer that was why the apostles when they were threatening them did they pray individually Acts chapter 4. Remember they came together because they understood this. It took that kind of grace to bring the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. They could not pray alone and have the Holy Spirit come. So when the Bible says Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come. It said they were all gathered in one accord. That formation gave the Holy Spirit room to come. In Acts chapter 4 when they threatened them. They came together and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. He says, stretch forth your right hand now to heal. And that signs and wonders be wrought through your holy child. And the building shook. There is a difference between your personal prayer life and the body of Christ. The body of Christ is a mystery of possibilities. When you understand the mysteries that govern the body of Christ, you will do things that you will never imagine you would have done. Are we together? I remember when 
a few people wrote jam here you were you were testaments of the things marks being added i'm not talking of those 40 40 marks you see people someone will check his jam 197 go and check again 231 how did that happen look let me tell you something when you see a man of god study the systems around his life don't just say this person is anointed Kai, he has power what makes the heaven owe him it's like it's like god god owes certain men of god a debt he must pay even if they call his name joking he has to show up there is something that makes that happen my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god our covenant is calling you oh god take my praise oh god take my praise oh god sing it one more time my altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. It's calling you, oh God. Take my praise, oh God. Take my praise. Listen. Let me tell you something powerful. Numbers 24. Let me do my teaching now. Mike. Numbers 24. Let me share something with you that will break some gates open. I want your spirit to be sensitive. Something will happen in this place today. Numbers 24. Balaam was called by Balak to curse the nation of Israel. I've shared it here. The Lord asked me to repeat it, so I'm repeating it. Now listen. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, it's actually 23, 24. I'm jumping for time's sake. Follow the story. He went not as in other times to seek for enchantment. Now, there's a lot to say about Balaam. The Bible talks about the doctrine of Balaam, the error of Balaam, the way of Balaam. There is a long story on that. I don't want to go into that. But he set his face towards the wilderness. Let's rush it. Go ahead. And Balaam lifted his eyes. Balaam wanted to find out where... Listen, listen. Let me explain the whole scene for you. A prophet is brought by Balak and he said, cause koinonia make things to start going wrong for people are we together now balaam tells them look oh, i am a prophet in other words i don't speak the way i want so as we stand here whatever you hear me say is what god is saying agreed they said agreed so they brought gifts balaam would have sought god by lifting his face to the hills that's the key sammy said i will lift up my eyes to the hills they know where their help comes from. But now Balaam used enchantment so that God would not be able to prophesy through him. Are you getting the story? He used divination to invoke spirits so that they would prophesy. So Balaam stood and after he used those enchantments, he was about to curse and his mouth produced blessings. And he was surprised. He moved to another place again and used invocations about to speak and he blessed them. He went to another place about to speak and he blessed them. And Balaam said, ah. Balak was angry. And he said, what is all this? I brought you to curse them. All that has been coming out of your mouth is blessings. Please watch this. And Balaam lifted his eyes to check. They were on a mountain. And he said, no, I'm a prophet. Let me look. What is the reason why no curse is working? And this is what he saw. Hallelujah. And he saw Israel abiding in what 
his tents. There was a spiritual formation from the valley. Israel were wise people. They didn't just say, let's rest. They said, ah, ah, it is possible that the kings will come and destroy us. So let us engage the formation. There is a pattern. Oh. They arranged themselves according to their tribes with the ark of God being at the center. And they said, let's see who will cause us. They kept the ark there. So when Balaam stood at the mountain to cause the ark fought him back. And he said, I don't know what is wrong. I can't cause them. I can't cause them. Then listen to what he said. According to their tribes. And finally the spirit of God came upon him. This is what he said. The secret. And he took a parable. That's how prophets. Remember Hosea chapter 12. I have spoken in similitudes or parables. I have multiplied visions. He took a parable and he said, Balaam, the son of Beor, had said, speaking about himself, and the man whose eyes are open, talking about himself, had said, verse 4, and he had said, which heard the words of God, which saw the visions of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Verse 5, how goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. That's the secret. I look at your tent and your spiritual formation and I see you arranged in a way that no cause, no enchantment. That's why he said no divination, no enchantment against Jacob. It's not just because they are Christians. Please listen to what I'm teaching you now. There was a spiritual pattern and literally Balaam as a true prophet could not cause them. They didn't fight. They just could not cause them. When it was time in 2 in Chronicles 20 verse 20 or well, we'll read from verse 15 downwards if there's time. They were about to fight. Three kings came together to fight them and the Bible said they had another formation. Kai. These guys use formations for victory, not stories. They inquired of the Lord what pattern will produce the result. And they said, let the worshippers be in front. And when the worshippers were in front, together with the ark, the warriors were behind. He said, this is not an issue of sword. And they began to sing. Hearken all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord, be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Let's read down quickly. Tomorrow, go up against them, and so on and so forth. 17. Listen, he said, ye shall not what? Set yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not or be dismayed. Tomorrow you go up against them. Verse. And Joseph had bowed his head, this and that and that. Verse 19, there's something I'm looking for. Now listen, and the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and of the children of all of those people stood up to what? praise the lord of the lord god of israel with a loud voice on high right and then of course they rose early in the morning and then when they began to praise you know a prophecy came next verse it says and when he had consulted the people he appointed what look at the formation who did he appoint do you use musicians to fight war musicians to fight war three kings about to kill you i hope you know they were not acting it was real death but there was a pattern it says and they should praise the beauty of his holiness and as they went out before the army and to say praise the lord for his mercy endured forever what happened and when they began to sing and to praise the lord set ambushment against the children of ammon moab and mount Seir, which were come against judah and were smitten next verse for the children of this stood up to slay themselves read the last sentence if you're a christian want to read everyone helped to destroy <sighs> military people killing themselves there were two left and he said who dies first say you either kill the other person and kill himself while they were doing that other people were there invoking a pattern listen there's something I teach the school of ministry students called the reflection principle. Listen, I want to teach you something very powerful. 
It's a principle that is used in occultism. It's a principle that is used. It was an, an aberration of God's principle. Listen. You only host a spirit and a dimension of the possibility of a spirit if you create the atmosphere for that spirit to feel at home as though it were in its primary place of habitation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if the ambassador of U.S. comes to the U.S. consulate office in Abuja, it was designed to accommodate him. His appetites, the colors, the architecture. Are we together? There is a pattern based on the ideology of the United States. They built the embassy that way. So whether he is in Nigeria or he's in America, it does not make any difference to him. Because the embassy in Nigeria reflects the dexterity and the glory of America. Are we together? Now watch this. If I want a spirit, any spirit, please give me this. Sir. Sorry. No. If I want a spirit, assuming I'm a herbalist, I am not a herbalist. Assuming I'm a herbalist, are we together? And I want a spirit to come upon this. I'm not just going to say spirit come. Spirit break out. And then you think it will come. No. There is, I must find out what that spirit is. And the nature of its operation. And the kind of atmosphere that makes it come. And I will make this water become like the atmosphere. The spirit must come atmospheres are magnets they draw spirits and they draw possibilities to the earth and to territories please listen to this this is very important so this is what the psalmist said the holy ghost wanting to come into the new creation he said a body has thou prepared you prepared it in such a way that when i come into that body it will be as though i am in heaven when the body was prepared the spirit could come and that body today is called the ecclesia the body of christ it was built in a particular way christ the foundation the apostolic and the prophetic and then the, it rises and he said that body you have prepared for me so god is able to function on earth because of the body that has been prepared for him are we together now when during our traditional festivals when they want to see certain spirits what do the masquerades do or the priests they wear a particular attire having a particular kind of animal skin alligator skin then some use snakes some use hyenas come on talk to me africa are we together so we have don't don't act as if you came from 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 the middle east we are here we are home amen they use fire they provoke these spirits they start chanting tongues and start moving in a particular direction they can move here small and come back again they can run and come back while they are doing that someone can be playing drums are we together and then at a particular point the snake will start coming out when the snake starts coming out they start dancing and putting fire because the snake is reflecting what is happening in the realm of the spirit so the gods are now coming the moment that happens what happens it's like people are under the anointing even the priests they are under their anointing they start doing crazy things they took fire in their mouth and nothing happens because a spirit landed let me tell you why it landed there was a pattern i counseled one man um on on tuesday on wednesday in abuja before i came He's one of the popular Nigerian directors, directors of Nigerian film, you know, and all of that. And he told me something. He said, man of God, most of the Nigerian films you see us acting, the snake we use, they are real snakes. But what they do is they go to charmers. You know, these guys are charm snakes. So they give them a particular ring so that they can pick the snake and nothing will happen. The ring has a pattern. It's a language the snake understands. That's why sometimes it backfires because those powers expire they must be renewed 
if at the point of expiration you are the one holding the snake the snake that you were you were in nice romance with would turn and injure you immediately are we together patterns so there are men whose lives are patterns you curse them it returns back to you and you are wondering see it is on this basis that you can say i am uncursable now the problem with the church is we say revelations without we we make statements without the spiritual revelation that activates those possibilities i am uncursable in the name of jesus and you find out there's a cause at work in your life clearly everybody knows you are cursed you have not cursed you are cursed we are seeing it it is on the strength of this there is a pattern don't laugh are we together so someone can vow like they vowed to paul and they said paul we will not eat nor drink until you are until you die and paul lived many years afterwards i'm teaching you something you can do on earth that is is like a spiritual formation that will make the Holy Spirit respond to you in a certain way and you will see doors open and you'll be wondering what happened is a pattern Balaam stood on the mountain and he saw the pattern and he said I can't cause them I'm trying I'm making efforts listen I can't tell you how many times on my way to travel people will call me and say apostle I just had a dream are you about to travel i say yes they say please sir don't travel i love you so much koinonia loves you i just had a dream this morning and in that dream i saw a plot and i saw that you had a ghastly motor accident and you died and then i said okay i appreciate now they are not they are not lying they saw it and what they saw was correct but there is a pattern kabarato satayaba David, I'm come and sing a song there, my spirit. Your influence is all over me, right? I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. And your influence is all over me. Let's say sit down listen brothers and sisters when it comes to kingdom advancement don't just think of your personal spiritual life alone there are limitations to your personal spiritual life as far as kingdom advance is concerned there are certain strategies of witchcraft that it takes more than you as a person to conquer it's not that Christ is not king of kings and lord of lords please hear me is a law there are formations there are things that have been engaged that requires the strength of the body not your strength alone if you do not understand this you will have a lot of casualties and you will mock yourself spiritual patterns 
formations that make men forbidable on earth they wanted to curse you just like somebody from your village now wants to curse you and you have been saying in the name of Jesus I'm uncursable I agree with you potentially but you have to engage the mystery that makes your word valid otherwise you will be shouting I will not be cursed until they 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 kill you like a chicken are we together please listen listen there are three of these spiritual patterns that I want you to learn tonight I don't know if we can touch all three but we'll stop somewhere and pray the first of that pattern listen is the power of altars an altar is a pattern I'm not talking altar like coven no an altar is a token that represents a point where covenants are enacted every time a covenant is enacted an altar is raised on earth as a memorial you see that all through in scripture every time people had covenants with god or with themselves they raised what altars an altar is nothing diabolic at all an altar is just a token it's a representation it doesn't even have to be physical a representation please listen a representation a platform that affords covenant to not only be renewed not only be remembered but to be activated three things happen on altars renewal right continuity or servicing if you want to call it and then the third is activation spiritual realities are activated upon altars listen please listen every man of God every true ministry called of God has an altar they may not call it altar they may call it all kinds of things some call it covenant some call it altar I don't care what they call it but this is what it is it is a token that represents a covenant between God and that man and serves as a memorial the altar that was raised in the day of of um, Noah when he raised that altar there was a sign of a rainbow is that true and God gave this as a token when circumcision itself is a token I hope you know when you circumcise a child it's a revelation that was given to Abraham circumcise them Joshua circumcise them the power and the revelation of the patterns that altars create are things we should never take for granted especially in such a wicked world koinonia has an altar you hear us sing that song my it's nothing diabolic i don't mean babala or something no, that's not what i'm talking about as a person there are covenants that i've had through my encounters with god that have become the platforms upon which certain possibilities ride the same way I have gleaned upon the covenant of others with God and it has become an advantage it has boosted my personal spiritual life it has boosted the possibilities that I can see in my own life please hear me and I want you to be sensitive we're about to pray be very sensitive right now when Abel died when Cain killed Abel, what cried? Please answer me, what cried? And he said, the blood of Abel cries and the blood is speaking. Abel is dead. 
the blood is saying revenge you have to bring vengeance upon Cain and Jesus now says that even his blood too speaks the only difference is that his blood speaks better things which were predicated on a better covenant are we together there are altars that speak over the lives and the destinies of men please listen 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 i want to give you spiritual intelligence you don't bind an altar it was enacted by covenant it's called the law of displacement there are two lights they keep shining until a greater light comes then it overshadows them are we together these are spiritual laws so many people do not know the foundation upon which their predicaments are coming they think it's just an issue of personal retreat for three days have you seen people who are praying and fasting on the last day of the fast what they were praying against is what happens maybe somebody sleeps with you in a dream and you charge and get angry and you go and say look three days i'm praying on the third day drive fast you are looking like a skeleton you are about to break you just decided to take a nap for the last 30 minutes and here the person comes as if your prayer made nonsense in the prayer you are shouting, jesus jesus and the person is just looking at you and say keep shouting your jesus there and comes to do exactly what he said to do you know why i know this thing so well because it happened in my life have you've heard my story wicked spirits will come and oppress me and come into my room my own was not even an experience I see them they see me but I couldn't do anything about it some of you say I shouted Jesus the pastor said, shout it well you shouted it well nothing happened please don't laugh I'm giving you a mystery because we're about to pray are we together we have lost the advantage of the patterns that God gave the body it's not about an individual's personal success there are times when the secret to your breakthrough is based on alignment to covenants that God has had and he will respond to you and have respect for the covenant are we together there are people who have a covenant with God that every time they show up in a city there must be breakthroughs so they show up in a city to have a crusade and when they show up to have a crusade people who have no business with that crusade receive breakthroughs that have nothing to do with that ministry because for as long as that individual is there that territory has an advantage of tapping into the covenant that he has are you getting what i'm saying there are people who personally their prayer life is dead but when they get to the prayer department on Tuesday to pray, you find out that you who was struggling to pray for five minutes, you now stretch for two hours. It's because something picked you. That's why you can go back home and say, ah. So it is God's system to help you so that even when your spiritual life is down, Satan will still not be able to reach you. Before you come back to life, there is a system that covers you. Altars. That we can take advantage of there are men who when they come into a city you know everything shakes it's not by the loudness of the publicity but they come in with the presence they carry they come in with the covenants that they carry and you find out that there are strange results strange testimonies that happen to people and then they leave we'll find somewhere and stop i want to pray my life has changed like day and night because of this truth that i have discovered i found it as a key because there were certain limitations in my life though anointed though a great man of god though having encounters with jesus at a point in my life there were certain mountains that would not move there were certain doors that would not open regardless of what i did and i said lord but your word says if i have faith like a monster seed i know that i have faith and then god began to teach me for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep 
because they cannot discern the body their inability to discern the body that has been prepared to host the spirit everything is possible but you need to know how to make it possible you need to know how to make it possible this night looking at me and hearing me by the thousands are men and women who have done certain things alone you have struggled spiritually you love God you have held on to some of these principles but the truth is that door has refused to open you have done what you know to do I show you the third key you must engage it's called the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants God has entered covenants with individuals he has entered covenants with systems please I can beg you some of you are looking for admission listen to what I'm telling you and get into school otherwise sit down there roaming around that you have 230 and repeat the same nonsense that has been going on some things in life will not move just by your personal faith do you know that when Jesus was on earth he was not the only miracle worker please answer me is that true there was a time his disciples saw other people who were not in Jesus's camp but they were still performing miracles not by Baal not Beelzebub and they said, ah, Jesus, this is, this is strange. Ah, I thought you were the Savior. And he said, I, paraphrasing, I came to introduce something new. But until the new comes, the old is still valid. There was a way miracles were done in the old covenant. There were people who believed it. There was a priesthood that made it possible. For instance, an angel would come and steer the water. Was Jesus around when it happened? No, but it happened. A particular prophet in the Bible when a woman was sick or someone was sick he made herbs leaves and put it on the legs of the person are we together if you understand what I'm teaching you then you will know that when you stand and the mountains look like they are not you have done all you know to do listen stop trying harder the key is not harder the key is step back and look at the body of christ don't look at yourself again look at the body of christ what spiritual tribe is connected to the possibility that will open the door i'm looking for you can be a man of god full of grace and prayer but you know that there is no prosperity in your ministry and you are saying lord we have prayed we have fasted this prosperity thing is not working step back and look at the body of christ a body has thou prepared for me sometimes god can give you just one instruction go to any living faith branch hold what you have as a seed and go and sow it in that you don't even have to be prayed for the moment you pray for it you go back and god says fine what you have done is called alignment to a covenant and God begins to relate with you the same way he relates with God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. And you will find out mysteriously, mysteriously. Something happened recently. Somebody called me and they had a court case recently. And Ejimi, this court case, humanly speaking, was already against the person. There is no human way on earth he would have won that case. And when he called me, I said, tell me the truth. When he told me everything, ah, I said, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Because I, I, I know a bit about legalities. And I know that based on that thing, if he's to spend time in the prison, it will be nothing less than 10 years away from his wife and his children. But I told him, I said, well, I don't know what to tell you. But if you can believe what I want to tell you, there can be a way out. I told him, I said, I can pray for you. God has given me grace for territories and I want to pray for you. 
I prayed for that guy. Do you know I got to find out he didn't even show up on the day of, because of fear, he didn't show up in the court. He refused to show up. And later he would tell me that the judge looked and looked at everything and threw away the case from the court. Now, please, brothers and sisters, please, you went to school, you are intelligent. In Nigeria, who does that? <sighs> you reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on the earth. You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty. The Bible says Christ is the head of all principalities. He recognizes their existence. So he says your only advantage is that I am the head. Not that you say they are not there. No. It's your Bible. I'm teaching you spiritual intelligence. But many people say, assume they are not there. Are you kidding? When they refuse Jesus from entering back, they say, who is this king of glory? He had to explain himself. Christ is the head of principalities he said he has been made above thrones so he recognizes them above dominions and every name that is named not only in this earth but in the world to come what do you not know that is responsible for the devil sinking through your life and making it look like God is not alive please hear what I'm saying a job will not just come because you think you're a Nigerian there are mysteries you have done there are many arrogant pastors in ministry who are suffering this they've done everything to do but the key is an alignment an alignment that opens up spiritual possibilities an alignment those who were mina i'm sure maybe my friend pastor petrock is listening petrock you know i love house on the rock and all of that when we went to Mina, Aaron, you were there. The same thing you see in Koinonia. Crowds here, overflow on top and then outside. is alignment. Brothers and sisters, you may be a musician, but you can align to a system that will give you more than songs. You will find out that things are opening. You are a student, but you align to somebody who is paying you salary. And they say, no, you must be sleeping with the man. You say, no, I, I, I just belong to a tribe that has a covenant with God that is respected even by hell. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, what is not at work in your life is still available. It takes humility and alignment. Many people will insult me for what I'm teaching you now because they will think I'm teaching you human worship. God is my witness. I, I, I don't have time for all of those things, but you have to be careful who you listen to. Don't let men do well-meaning to deceive you. There are systems on earth that represent spiritual possibilities. You may argue it and never see certain things happen in your life. Please hear me. Look beyond your personal strength and look at the privileges that God has put in the body. A body has thou prepared for me. A body has thou prepared. This koinonia that you look at every time, maybe one day I will take out time and share the whole journey so that you will know that this is not just an ambition of a man to have a ministry. If I want fame, there are easier ways. I'm not dull. I can write books. Are we together? access to the riches and the blessings of heaven there are covenants you align with that will open you up to possibilities i don't want to begin to give you testimonies upon testimonies hallelujah we're already preparing to buy our land i will not tell you where it is until we buy it some of you will be surprised you will open your mouth and say it's a lie you can't get land like that a property that will swallow cgc how many times in this area because when you catch the keys listen 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 i don't say this to brag i'm challenging you it's, it's not by trying no door opens to shouting it opens to keys god is giving you something now you have been writing jam you are brilliant but it's not working 
don't stay foolish and say, I, I, I know this time around, I, I got 250. No. Are we together? Possibilities. There are men and women who God has put in the body of Christ in territories. That's why Satan creates a lot of controversy around their life to fight them so that what you are supposed to receive will not be given to you. But as we pray, the devil is a liar. Somebody's door is about to be opened. Rise up on your feet, everybody, and let's pray. We are going to pray three prayer points. And I want you to pray it with every, every ounce of strength. No carelessness, no looking around. You are going to cry to God. Prayer point number one. Lord, I acknowledge that I am limited as a person. No matter how spiritual I am. As a pastor, as an apostle, as a prophet, as a teacher, as an individual. I am limited. And I come before you with every sense of humility. Acknowledging my limitation. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I acknowledge. Lord, I acknowledge. I acknowledge that you have built a system. You have built a system beyond the personal spiritual progress of a man. You have designed this mystery called the body of Christ. This strategy called the body of Christ to lift men, to bail them out of captivity you have designed this mystery called the body of christ Hallelujah. Look up, please. Prayer point number two. I want you to be sincere before God. Mention all the things you know you have tried and done all you know to do but has not changed. Mention it before God because we are about to engage a mystery. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I've prayed over this failure in my family. Nothing has seemed to change. pray outside make sure you're praying those online make sure you're praying Darkness 
darkness rambles in your own light Then let hope Yeah Habalada baladada So let hope, let it rise tonight. Darkness rambles in your holy light. Let hope rise. Darkness rambles in your holy light. Hallelujah. Listen, as holy as man tried to be, there were some things he could not do for himself. So Jesus had to come. And man's salvation now is tied to his alignment to the finished work of Christ. It's a pattern. There are times your victory will be based on the finished work of others not just of Christ but they have cried the cry for you so you don't cry again they have taken the scars for you so you don't take it again but if you do not know Satan will cheat you there are times you will stand before that Red Sea please hear me just the same bar, please you stand before the Red Sea and the Red Sea will refuse to part you will you will invoke your personal altar. It will not open. Let me tell you, there are stubborn challenges like that in the life of a man. You will agree with your wife, your husband. It will not move. When all else fail, switch. Switch. Remember what tribe you belong to. Remember the spiritual possibilities that come. And say, oh God of salvation. Remember, remember, remember. Remember, 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 and all of a sudden, your God will arise, not for your sake. Listen, hear me. I don't know if it's a tight booklet of redeemed or living faith. I can't remember which of them. But there was a woman who had been a faithful titan. I don't know if it's redeemed or living faith. One of the ministries, she testified. Armed robbers came to her house and assassins to kill her and kill her husband. They stepped into the house. They were with guns. The man was there. His wife was there. All that there was was to shoot. And there was nothing to do. The man just, he knew he was gone. All else failed. And all the woman did was to bring out her tight booklet and dropped it on the ground. Remember the covenant. Is it not your house that was built with my money? Is it not souls that are saved with my money? Don't waste your time trying to say one day God will come. No, that one day you can create it. The day the pattern is there. As powerful as Jesus was, his heavens were closed until he had to encounter a man. The heavens of Jesus did not open because he was called Jesus. It was open based on the covenant that came down to John the Baptist. And so when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, behold the lamb. And he said, that's not the issue. My heavens are closed. And he said, suffer it to be so. I can't neglect the pattern. And when John dipped Jesus and brought him out, there was a transference and God responded. The heavens opened and he said, this is my beloved son. Please hear me. It's not as hard as your life makes it look. You just don't know what to do. We are going to cry and say, Lord, show me what I must do to come out of this challenge in my presence. Lift your voice and pray. There is always something to do. Koinonia, cry. Show me, oh God, what is the secret, the missing link to my healing ministry. The missing link to bring prosperity to my life. 
for us. I'd like you to pray. This ground, not I don't mean physical ground, but this mystery called koinonia is, is enshrined in strange covenants that are responsible for possibilities. Now please pay attention. We're about to pray strategic prayer. Are we together? I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I invoke the covenant that is upon this ministry the possibilities that your appearance the sacrifices are brought I invoke it upon my life pray the covenant of open doors the covenant of his Shekinah glory access to King Access to strange favor. Pastors, pray. Let it come upon my ministry, oh God. Pray. Let it come upon my life. Lord, I've written this jam by my strength. I've tried and tried, but I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to make money. By my strength, I've fasted, I've sown seed, I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to get a job, I've tried to get a job. It's not working. I cry to the God of heaven. Let hope, let hope, let it rise tonight. The covenant of long life. The covenant of honor. Strange honor. Access to kings, access to nobles, access to royalties, access to power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
as you pray this next prayer listen there will be strange impartations and strange testimonies on people this these are testimonies coming from heaven are we together i want you to pray it with all your heart all your heart all your heart listen listen see that you are part of this great house is no guarantee that you will enjoy the blessings that come it must be intentional proximity is not connection are we together proximity is not connection i have tapped into the covenant that god has had with people who have gone higher than me and they have opened me to strange doors realms that i know are not realms that are as a result of my personal prayer life i'm a product of many anointings many graces many spiritual possibilities please hear what i'm telling you and step into a strange i show you a deep mystery many of you will not appreciate it until you struggle and life whips nonsense out of you you will come back to this message and it will make sense to you there are many ministries that are anointed but they may never grow they have done all they need to do they have prayed there are groups there are all kinds of sincere people around you've done all you know to do listen you were not designed to do everything as regards your growth by yourself that's why god put the body did a body has thou prepared a body has thou prepared are we together there are mysteries when a Jimmy shared with me the supernatural birth of his wife I couldn't believe it in minutes she had given birth case closed because there are mysteries you engage are we together please hear what I'm saying you see hope standing you see Aaron's wife standing almost as if they didn't give birth right there is a mystery what you don't know does not mean it cannot work you just don't know how to make it work are we together we are going to pray one last prayer with all your heart every area you know must work in your life listen 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 it pleases the lord when you have testimonies it pleases the lord there are some of us certain sicknesses are killing us no you've taken drugs you've done everything without your imagination there are there are there are graces that we have seen sometimes all it takes is recognition to say lord i tap into this grace i shared with you my story when i went to sow a seed to god's servant bishop david Oedeko. and when i came out the lord asked me kneel down on the ground bare ground that ground i laid my hands upon it it's not about idolizing altars and all of that no and he said lay your hands on the ground i laid my hands on the bare ground and the lord said from this day you have entered the overflow anointing are we together it was an old woman who prophesied upon my life and said my son forever you will walk upon gold that's what that mama told me till tomorrow to whether she's a human being or an angel i don't know I bought sugar cane of 50 naira. Sugar cane of 50 naira changed my destiny forever. Are we together? You join them, you will die like them. Listen to what I'm telling you. There are many arrogant people in our society who believe they know what they are doing. Even when they are quartered to destruction, they will still be bragging. If you are not seeing results for a long time in your life, please calm down and find out what is it. Thank God for the area you are seeing results. But what of the areas where there are no results? We are going to pray. And you are going to cry to the God of your salvation in one minute. And say, Lord, the unction, the grace, the unction that must land upon my life now for those doors to open. If it did not come through my personal prayer life, then I take advantage of this spiritual formation that is in this house. I take advantage of this spiritual formation. Are we praying? Go ahead and pray. I'm about to pray for you, but pray.
the anointing that must come upon my life must come upon my ministry must come upon my prayer group the grace let it come oh god let it come let it come oh god let it come let it come oh god let it come shakata prakata barada bala kosoto praskata em prakata kata tata po kosoto prakata bala gada bosh makata pakara taka sekete em praktas kata baska bosoto balikata parekete kete kete pekete kotosh meka praskata barata tia Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, everyone. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Spirit, pray out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Lift your hands Father I'm about to pray for you Something will come upon your life right now and I want you to believe it. In the name that is above all names. Father, it is by your wisdom and by your orchestration you designed the body. No one designed it and gave it a blueprint. You designed the blueprint of the tabernacle in heaven. And you gave Moses and said reproduce it on earth. And the moment they built according to pattern, your glory came. Lord, there is a spiritual formation in this house that makes for your presence that makes for influence that makes for honor that makes for effective prayer lives and lord i pray that that grace in no small way by covenant i cry upon you the god of my salvation that tonight oh god you remember your covenant with this house and that you change the lives of people therefore right now i pray i stretch my hands at the count of three I pray that this grace will come upon people right now. Father, remember the covenant one. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Take it now. 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 Wherever you are, I challenge those mountains. Take the anointing. Challenge the business mountain. Take the anointing. Challenge death. Challenge it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Take it now. Please help them. Inside and outside, I release that grace. The grace that is an incense from the covenant upon this house. Every spirit that has refused to leave your destiny to move forward. Right now in the name of Jesus. The same way Balaam could not cause Israel. I command that spirit. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the voice of the altar. Be gone now. Be gone now. Be gone now. Be gone now. Shake it. Be gone now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see things leaving the stomach of ladies. Many ladies. This is what I'm saying. Something that looks, I don't know what it looks like, honestly. But I'm seeing it leaving people in strange ways. Lord, let it go. Let it go, whatever it represents. Now, now, now. Let it go. Every sickness. Let it go. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Heaven, calm down. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands, those on this road. Just lift your hands, those on this road. Because I just saw a wind move here. Very, very serious formation. And the Lord is saying that this grace, this grace is for supernatural results. That's what is happening. I stretch my hands right now. Right now, right now. All through. All through. Right now. I stretch my hands. All through this row. 
Remember the covenant of God in the name of Jesus. Take men to deeper levels. Acceleration. Speed. 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 Spirit break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. Hallelujah. One last prayer. Listen. It is not to be abused, but there are many of us, our prophetic dimensions are closed. I need to activate it right now. There are many men of God here. You pray, but your, your perception is not powerful. Your, 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 your radar, I mean, come on now. You, you can't be a man of God, a woman of God, and your perception. All your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit are deadened. I want to pray for you. There needs to be a prophetic generation. It's not just about prophesying to people. It's about having a blueprint of the details of your destiny released for you. Are we together? Lift your hands. The last prayer point, inside and outside. Please, listen. From you, my dear, hold your hands to this lady. This one. Stand up. I don't know who you people are, but there's something I'm seeing. I'm seeing a line from all of you. It's like you are coming from somewhere. Is that true? Hold your hands. Something will come upon you. Just you people now. I stretch my hands at the count of three. Let this strange grace come. One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it right now. In a strange way. It begins to burn from within your spirit. You will never be the same. Never, 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 never be the same. Lift your hands. I want to pray for everybody now. Please. I'd like you to pray. There needs to, that prophetic dimension has to come alive. Otherwise, there are limitations. God wants to show you things about your destiny. But you must have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. In the name of Jesus. Father, at the count of three. I'm praying by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Sabataba. The spirit of prophecy. Grace that gives men access to portals in the spirit. At the count of three. Take it now. One. Two. Take it, take it, take it. I open it. I open it. I open it. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I activate dreams, prophetic dreams, prophetic encounters, prophetic experiences. Hear the voices of the spirit. Hear the sounds in the spirit. I release upon you that grace for dreams, not foolish dreams prophetic dreams receive it now right now dreams dreams visions of the night dreams strange dreams visions of the night hallelujah i pray for you whatever has made your perception dull so that you don't pick signals in the spirit I stand before the God whom I serve and I stretch my hands towards you may a configuration happen to your spirit man right now right now as I speak I release that grace strange grace for perception strange grace for discernment strange grace for perception strange grace for discernment strange grace for perception strange grace for discernment Strange grace for perception. Spirit breaker. Breaker walls down. 
you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice and sing yeah 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 Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord is giving you beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. And a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Beauty for ashes. There is a woman that came here with a sick child. There is a woman that came here with a sick child. What's wrong with him? Help her with the mic. No mic. What's wrong with him? Huh? SS. SS. This is not the situation. I'll pray for him, but in fact, this this is a baby it's not even somebody as old as this this is somebody within the age range of maybe a small child that is sick i don't know if it's inside or outside the lord wants to heal that person go dear go dear go dear Come, your breakthrough has come. Yeah, yeah. Where are you coming from? Samaru. You believe Jesus will touch you right now? You believe that? Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. And other things. You know what I'm talking about, right? Listen, you have to give God everything. I'm not talking of born again. Everything. Total surrender. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's no one leg in, one leg out. It has to be completely all for him. Hold my hands and let me pray for you. You all go there or pray for me. Will you let her go now in the name of Jesus? I see you in the spirit. You will let her go now. I'm speaking to this other lady. Don't worry, she may not be looking at me. I'm not talking to her. Release her family right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I cause darkness. I cause darkness over the family. I set you free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. From every power that is not of God. Madam. I'll, there will be a prayer session and I'll pray for your son. But let me just lay hands on him since you came out. Someone had a dream this morning. You saw me laying hands on you just this morning. Early this morning. I know people have this kind of dream. But someone specifically had that dream this morning. Father, heal this boy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, look at me. You love Jesus with all your heart. Very much. He will do mighty things through your life. Just be patient. Okay. Huh? Now is not the time of manifestation. Now is the time of building. But it is true that he will do mighty things through your life. Hold my hands. 
Father, do to her what she saw in the dream. In the name of Jesus. It will do something to your spirit. It's an awakening that is happening to you. chains of limitation over you now I cause those chains I set them on fire in the name that is above all names may those chains be broken and I separate you from error there is a spirit of error that can come with zeal when it is misdirected I separate you from error you will be circumspect and you will only be accurate in the name of Jesus. Where is Isaac in ushering? Is he around? It's time for you to step into a new level. The Lord is removing something. I'm seeing like a surgery being done on you. There is something that so badly keeps you from rising to the next level. And the Lord says, it's time I prune it. It's a desire. It's an appetite that he's killing because it does not come from him. He wants to do mighty things. Hold my hands. Kill that appetite, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let that leave. Everything that does not name the name of Christ, may it leave. Come. This gentleman, you, it's time to respond to the dream you had. Come. These are wicked forces of darkness. Tying your life and your destiny down with delay. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free by the power of God. That demonic dream and the experience that, had, that you had there, let it never return again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever gives them legal access to your life is sealed and broken by the blood. last person and then we'll just come my dear this lady no yes come you now yes let no man despise you for out of you will come a treasure let no one despise you. Let no one despise you. For out of you will come a treasure. The Lord says, I should tell you, there is this treasure that is hidden in earthen vessels. That the excellency and power may be of God and not of men. Come, hold my hands. There is a fragrance that is coming upon your life from today. That will make you uncommon. Uncommon. Distinguished. For you love the Lord with your whole heart. You love the Lord with your whole heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, everything that makes men despise, I curse it. I curse it. Hallelujah. Wow. Acts chapter 3. to your neighbor and say are you still here I just want to charge us a bit welcome everybody all those who came from far and near honor you glad to have you here you will never be the same now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour and a certain man lame from birth was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seen Peter and John follow me closely about to go into the temple asked an arm 
And Peter fastened, fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And this is the key verse, verse 5. Let's read together. One to read. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something. Expecting to receive something. When he said, look on us, they paid attention because they were expecting that they were going to receive something. As I began to pray and say, Lord, what would I share with your people? The Lord said, the only thing I need from them is expectation. Expectation. Expectation is a proof of faith. Expectation is a proof that you trust God. Hallelujah. If you, if you tell me you are hungry and I dip my hands in my pocket, automatically you begin to have a sign of expectation because you anticipate that I'm bringing out something. Is that true? And so you begin to position yourself to receive and say thank you. The only thing God is asking from you tonight is that you be expectant expect that sickness to leave your body expect that family captivity to come to an end expect the lord to visit you expect to step into new levels of the anointing expect that no matter what the challenge is the power of god can step into your life it does not take time it only takes the spirit of god for where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty where the spirit of the lord is not there is no liberty i want you to know that the spirit of god is in this place tonight and the only message the lord asks me to communicate to you is that your heart be expectant expectant lord i expect to be healed i expect that you will wipe my tears i expect that this situation in my life will change at once i expect it i expect it do you believe? Do you expect that God will do something in your life? God is already visiting people. You do not imagine the degree of spiritual preparation that goes in to all of our meetings. Talk less of the miracle service. So I want you to know that there is enough grace. There is enough anointing. Hallelujah. Right away we'll begin to pray and I'll just be moving in the anointing and God will minister to us. Please and please let your heart be expectant that's the only message the lord asked me to give us tonight expectation expectation expect that that which you wrote in your prayer request will be answered expect that that which you came down see don't look at the situation just be expectant be expectant the greatest enemy to expectation is your past your history your track record of failure. Your track record of the seeming shortcomings of God. So every time you expect, you say, but I prayed before. But I fasted before. It says, forgetting the things that are behind. Forgetting what happened yesterday or what did not happen yesterday. I press. Everyone say, I press. I press. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Just for two to five minutes. That's the only message the Lord asked me to bring to us tonight. Expectation. Let there be a, a depth of expectation in your heart. Lift your voice and cry to God. And say, Lord, I am expectant. Pray. Lord, as your power moves and as your spirit is touching men, I am expectant. I came with a hunger. I came for a touch. I came for an encounter. I came with an expectation.
Alléluia. 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 Before we pray, come, Pastor Femi. The Lord says, I should tell you, He's opening you up to a season of wisdom. 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 He's opening you up to strange wisdom. Wisdom. That's what you are receiving. Wisdom. Strong wisdom. He's opening you up to a season of wisdom. That's what you need for the next level of your life. Wisdom. Tremendous wisdom. The wisdom of the Spirit. The wisdom of the Spirit. The wisdom of the Spirit. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. Lord, I pray that you activate fountains of wisdom in him. Strange order of wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wisdom in your decisions. Dimensions of wisdom that you have never seen before. You will make decisions that will accelerate your life. Accelerate ministry. Hallelujah. In one minute, mention everything you came with as a challenge. And say, Lord, the time has come for your grace and your power. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Shalom. My Father, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Shalom. Jehovah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. We're starting tonight with individuals that God is giving them breakthroughs. Every single one of those individuals will come under the anointing of the Spirit. At the count of three. Just those individuals. One, two, three. Now, now, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it now. That breaker anointing. I release it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. All the ones separated for breakthroughs right now. Inside and outside. I release that breakthrough anointing. That breakthrough anointing right now that breakthrough anointing right now it comes 
like a mighty rushing wind the breakthrough anointing the breakthrough unction enough of that level enough of that dimension I speak it I declare it I prophesy it and I release it take it from your belly out of your belly let it gush like living waters out of your belly that breaker anointing in the name of Jesus out of your belly that breaker anointing breakthroughs 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 I end the struggle I end the struggle I end the struggle by the breakthrough anointing I end the struggle right now I end the struggle right now all over the building I end the struggle right now Shaka ba 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 Shaka ta ba 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 Shaka ta ka ta and broke the kete elekete bo soto ba para ta rikete bo lo sekete sekete kete elekete bo and broke ta ta la ka ti de bo sha sekete le koto shia Hallelujah Hallelujah Everyone lay your hands on your stomach Just lay your hands on your stomach Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your stomach. He said, for out of your belly, something will happen to some people right now. Out of your belly. Just keep your hands there. Father, in the name of Jesus, where are the ones you are separating? Spiritual breakthroughs. Right now. Right now. And right now, from your belly. From your belly. From your belly. From your belly in the name of Jesus out of your belly let it flow let it flow living waters living waters living waters new dimensions living waters skatata kapata rekete tekete bekata taboskata embrata kata shekete lekes from your innermost being from your innermost being from your innermost being from your innermost being a busting thought of new wine a busting thought of new wine a busting thought of new wine a busting thought Hallelujah. 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 Sabarada balada bakadia. There are people here right now. Listen. You came here because you are confused. There is no direction. You are trusting God for direction. You have prayed but there is nothing to do. You need direction desperately. Lift your hands. Lord, I pray wherever they are right now, by the light of the Spirit, my Father locates them. Receive direction right now. Receive direction right now. Marital direction. Academic direction. Receive direction. Receive direction. I put it in your spirit by the light of God. I put it in your spirit by the light of God. I put it in your spirit by the light of God. By the light of God. By the illumination of the spirit. Direction. You will hear that voice. You will hear that voice. You will hear that voice. Saying this is the way you will hear that voice saying this is the strategy you will hear that voice Hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands. The Lord wants to destroy marital delay. This is what is happening right now. Marital, just keep your hands. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Hallelujah. Now hear me. There are people here who God wants to release them into their marital destiny. But there are horns and powers that has kept them down. You may think it's finances or you may think it's this and that but the enemy has done this. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. I release you right now. I release you. I release your family. I release your sisters. That power that has held your marital destiny. Hear the voice of the Lord. That power that has stopped marriage in your family. I speak in the name of Jesus. Be loose right now. 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 Hallelujah. Now, lift your hands. I'm seeing in the spirit a tree without fruit. And so I know the Lord wants me to destroy barrenness. 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 There is someone who came here with that situation. I don't know if it's a couple or somebody. You are expecting a miracle desperately. Let me have that one person come out. I'm going to pray for everybody right now, but we need to break that yoke right now. We need to break that yoke right now. There are families tied down. There are families tied down. When you identify that person, the person can come out. Lift your hands. Let me pray. No, the Lord wants the family to come out first. Come out first. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Where's your wife? She left my house October 26th. We don't have the courier and she packed her things and she left. We married for eight years, no child. You've been married for eight years no child. with no child. And so because of the frustration, she left. Do you know where she is? She's in Kaduna in her mother's house. Why did she leave? Look at how the devil steps in to destroy families. Eight years and is living because there is no child. But are you still in touch? Well, the church tried to call her. She didn't answer. So I left her alone. I was just praying that God should just intervene. So a friend of mine invited me from Kaduna to come to this program. Where is the friend? Friend, come. She's I need to pray for you. May God bless you. Let's celebrate the friend. Hallelujah. These are the kind of useful and relevant friends that God should bring in your life. Friend, where are you? May God bless you. You are a good friend for inviting him to come and receive breakthrough. Do you believe your wife will come back? Yes, sir. You want her back? Yes. Sir. I'm going to pray for you. Your wife will return back. Amen. Forget about what has happened. God will give you two boys, two girls. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you, sir. You are a good man and you love God. Not only that, what do you do? 
I work in an electronics company, Samsung. So when we had this issue of this marriage, they have to let go of me. But I have my own personal business in Kaduna, which I, know. I God established. Is helping you. Yes, this marriage has destroyed too many things in your life. You've lost money. You've lost a lot of people, even cars. Because I'm seeing somebody that really used to be blessed. What is like? Things are going down. The Lord is going to restore you. Do you believe that? You believe that? Yes, sir. Therefore, what God has joined, the Bible says, let no man put asunder. You need to be delivered. Right? There is a spirit that is making these things happen. You are a good man. You will be delivered right now. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shabaka brothers of I release your destiny right now. In the name of Jesus. I call forth your wife into your life and I open the fountains of fruitfulness. The Lord showed me two boys, two girls and I release them to your life. This power that has tied you down and tied your family in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that it is released right now. In the name of Jesus, I'm holding your hands and with these hands, may your business jack up beyond that which you have ever known. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will restore your fortune and he will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Friend, come. Where are you from? Kaduna too? Ka Zaria. Yeah. Zaria, yeah. You came alone? Yes. No, I came with a friend. What would you want the Lord to do in your life? Marital breakthrough. Marital breakthrough. Yes. What does that mean? Marriage or health yes, in your marriage? Marriage. Marriage. When? This year. You believe it? Yes. Or you're just saying it? You have already spoken the word and it's happening. Let me pray for you. Father, you anointed us to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To appoint unto them. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that before this year runs out, your husband comes to you and may you be happily married. You will marry a godly man. May you marry a blessed man. One who will love you and fear the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you, sir. Now lift your hands and let me pray. I'm praying for barrenness. I don't care what represents barrenness in any area of your life. Lift your hands. Barrenness can mean unfruitfulness in any aspect. He says, Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army, but he was leprous. It was an area of barrenness. Barrenness is that aspect of your life that is not productive. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you right now. Lift your hands. Father, there are people who like a vine have refused to bear fruit in different areas. Others want to bear fruit, but the enemy has stopped it. I pray for you right now. Every power that is sitting on your fruitfulness. Where are those people who barrenness have held their lives? Where are those people? In the name of Jesus, let fire come upon you now. Let fire come upon you now. I destroy the hold of barrenness. Everywhere in this building, I break the chains of barrenness. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This row, can you lift your hands? Just this row. Just this row. Just keep your hands lifted. I see a wind blowing through this row. Barrenness be destroyed from the back to the front. Back to the front. Back to the front. There is no hiding. Back to the front. There are many people in this row. I break it right now. I break it right now. Right now to the back. From the back to the front. 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 
in the name of Jesus Christ anyone under any influence of unfruitfulness right to the back in the name of Jesus be set free hallelujah now lift your hands I want to minister deliverance to the oppressed this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils when the spiritual limitation is taken away then your life will move forward what will happen tonight is not just for you but for every family you represent so there are people who will come under the influence of the anointing to be delivered not just for themselves but for their families and the families you represent lift your hands father in the name that is above all names i'm praying there are spirits sitting on families and the destinies of people appearing to people in dreams and visions and corrupting your purposes for their lives and lord it's time for them to go because this is mount zion now therefore i speak to every foul spirit every devil of darkness every yoke every territorial power that sits across territories I speak in the name of Jesus by the authority of the Lord Jesus and I come under an apostolic anointing I bring every spirit under arrest and I command that you will live at the count of three now at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus and they must leave you one two three second spirit husband every territorial power ancestral spirits that tie people and families come out now come out now come out now come out of god's people in the name of jesus bring them out in the name of jesus i cost those powers I cost those powers. I cost those powers. I cost those powers. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see spirits that come to people in night visions and dreams. Make intercourse with them and destroy their lives. Keep those hands lifted. Lord, where are those people? Let the sword of judgment find them now. Let the sword of judgment find them now. Let the sword of judgment. Sisters, lift your hands. A spirit will prefer to oppress a sister than a brother because with one sister there are many people that can become victims not because of immorality or anything it's just the nature the compelling character of women i pray right now anyone here whether you know it or not that is under the influence of any spirit that is not of god i pray and stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus, let fire come upon the spirit. Let fire come upon the spirit. They must let you go. In the name of Jesus. Oh, 
Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me that there are people here that start things but never finish. There are families that start things. You've been building a house for 10 years and will never complete it. Lift your hands. The finisher's anointing is going to come upon a few people right now. That grace to start and finish at the count of three is coming upon you for your destiny. Coming upon you for your family. Receive it right now. One, two, three. The finisher's anointing breaking the course of delay. The finisher's anointing breaking the yoke of delay. Projects that have refused to finish. Projects that have refused to finish. Hallelujah. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Now, for all those who came with sick people, you can march to the front now for prayer. Inside and outside. It's time to pray for the sick. Instrumentalists give us very anointed tunes. Worship team, help us. While that is happening, if you've not written your prayer request, do that quickly. And in case you think you need to add something to it, please don't stop playing. While you are seated here, the power of God is visiting you. So be in the spirit, inside and outside, no matter how far you are, connect in the spirit. You can call your loved ones to quickly send in their requests. There is a God that answers prayer. Please make way for those who are coming out. Jesus is a healer. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. of you who have come out I want you to wave goodbye to your infirmities and mean business with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to believe that Jesus still heals and he will heal you right now. Hallelujah. We'll be very fast about it. Yep. Just give her a chair. Hallelujah. All of you standing here, believe that Jesus will heal you right now. He will give us a sign. And the sign will be from one of you. Something will happen to one of you right now. And that will give us the sign of the stirring of the waters. power of God will come strongly upon one of you right now when that happens then it will allow us to pray for the sick 
right now. In abundance. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let there be miracles. I see miracles everywhere. Be discerning, be spiritual. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Right now. This right now. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right, right now. Right now. Right now. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles. Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Right now. Right now. I see miracles everywhere. I see your miracles everywhere.
in an interesting situation. Who brought him? What's the issue? From where? From, from Gaja Gaja. From where? Pambegua. Pambegua. Yes, sir. You brought him from Pambegua. Yes, sir. What's wrong with him? You know, this is the stomach. Is the stomach is swollen. Yes. It's a witchcraft attack. Witchcraft attack. They remove a bone. Uh uh. Now, tell me all the details. What is wrong with him? You don't know. It's witchcraft attack, sir. Oga, okay. love Jesus. Gaskia, you understand English now? Conjuring Boka. Go back, Gaba. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not once, not twice. Yes, sir. Because I'm seeing a shrine. I'm seeing yes. concoctions. Yes, sir. I'm even seeing them pour something and he has, yes, he's yes, drinking. Sir. Yes, sir. See, these are some of the things that you, when you know something is demonic, you don't add it with another. The devil will never heal you. It will backfire. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. He loves God. He loves God. Yes. yes. That's a, oh, Selena, this is where we need, sir. Talk to him. Tell him Jesus will give you. Tell him what he needs. He can't walk well. Eh? Hold on. Don't worry. Ogasa, talk to him. You'll be interpreting him. Huh? Tell him in the name of Jesus. He will walk well now. And that witchcraft attack will leave. Ask him if he believes. And Tell him to go. What's this? The medical report. Father, this is why you anointed us. Every power that is not of God, I set you free from it right now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, you will walk normally by yourself. I release upon you the power that comes in the name of the Lord Jesus. For those of you who have never seen a miracle, watch closely what happens now. Hallelujah. I feel the healing anointing coming upon you. Stomach bloated. Jesus sets you free. I come in the name of the Lord. Tell him to hold my hands. Tell him to hold my hands. Release him. Release him. Walk. Come. Come. Tell him to come. happened to him now. Yes, 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 yes. let me tell you something it's not only settled I pray for you yes, that not only this will happen but God will use you to do this Amen. Same thing. receive that anointing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Baba tell him from today no witchcraft power will paralyze and keep him again I appreciate God. Go back to your seat. God bless you. Oh, oh, oh.
His glory since thy heaven. as fresh as that of a baby. This thing is not because of guitar. This is witchcraft. The devil does not want you to play onto the glory of God. Oh, you want play, to play for a club now, this hand will be healed. The devil is a liar. You Hallelujah. That's how he keeps play robbing guitar. the church of potential people who worship God. Praise the Lord. You believe Jesus will heal you? All this. Look at me. I'm going to pray for you. And the power of God will come upon you. You believe that? And then you move your whole hand and begin to try it. Say after me, Jesus. I believe. I believe. You're the son of the living God. You're the son of the living God. Right now. Right now. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Say it again. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Look at what is happening to his hands. Cannot move them. Go ahead and begin to move. 
Go ahead. Begin to move it. Move it by yourself. Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Start moving your fingers. Look at this. He couldn't move his fingers. Look at this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do what I'm doing. Hold it like this. Go ahead. Keep moving. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Couldn't use this at all. Couldn't even move. Jesus Christ, I declare that these hands become perfected. Can you see how the hands are? I mean, so stunned, you cannot even use it. Keep doing it. Keep shaking it. The power has gone and your hand recovers completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Give Jesus praise.
Oh, you say oh, you sense of God. Can we say it again? Call to him. He will answer. He will lift our hands. Come now, pray. Praise His name, holy saints of God. Say, oh, sing for joy through God our strength. Oh, sing for joy. To him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our head, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name. Oh, you say it's of God. One time. If we call to him, he will run to us. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. Hell from there, day by day. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. What the Lord has done, He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us victory. That's why we say, Oh, say, yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's why we sing, Oh, say, yeah. I say yeah, yeah. I say yeah. No baba. I say yeah. I say yeah, yeah. I say yeah. No. Oh, say yeah. I say yeah. No. I say yeah. I say yeah. I say yeah. Higher, 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 oh, oh. Higher, 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 higher. Lift 
Jesus higher. Higher, higher. Lift, lift, lift Jesus higher. Miracle walking God. Lift Jesus higher, 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 higher. Oh. Lift Jesus higher. What the Lord has done, He has destroyed the works of Satan. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Please, if, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, we are going to give God a hot, hot praise as we pray on this. Three to five minutes of hot praise. Dance out every nonsense out of your life. This name was Worship team, are you ready? This name I like that guy. That's ah, no, no. This name is Tima. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Steve. This name is Tima. The bank is in a big man. Say. Come on. Say. Oh, 
and begin to just pray in the spirit unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come oh God we have come before the mighty one I like you to pray there is nothing that our God cannot do there is nothing he cannot says unto you that answers prayers will all flesh come father this request represent the cries of your people this request represent the desires of your people this request represent the challenges of your people this request represents the obstacles that are standing on our path to destiny these requests threaten the advancement of your kingdom in our lives we pray in the name that is above all names that every request here be turned into a testimony in the name of the lord jesus christ no matter how impossible the situation is oh god i pray that one by one, one by one, they will come and testify of your goodness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Already for some, I heard that Victor's wife that we prayed for has been rushed to the hospital. Labor has started for her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is a very prophetic moment 
please everybody inside and outside don't let anyone distract you now lift your hands as we speak hallelujah I love this part of the meeting because this is where everybody gets to be blessed the power of prophecy and its ability to enter your life and change things please I want you to believe please I want you to believe no matter how far you are inside and outside I want you to believe hallelujah everything that represents limitation in your life everything that has stood as a limitation against your life and your destiny I come in the name of the Lord God the Lord God Almighty and I declare that in this month of May may that limitation be lifted up your life may that limitation be lifted up your life in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you whatever has stopped the helpers of your destiny from locating where you are whatever wrong advice whatever wrong impression has been given to them about you and your family that has made them refuse to come to your aid Makata katakata I call them into your life now in the name of Jesus Christ. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny into your life now. Hallelujah. I pray for you. This is the season where wisdom will be required for you to move to the next level. Listen. The Bible says through wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established. Through knowledge are the rooms filled with every treasurable thing. Wisdom for many of us is the key to the next level. And this is not human wisdom. It's not wisdom by scientific calculation. Strategies that are revealed of the spirit. Strategies that can take you in one day to realms that years have not brought you. I pray the wisdom of the spirit may it come upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. The wisdom for the next dimension. The wisdom for the next dimension. The wisdom for the next dimension. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the keys to a life of stagnation is confusion, lack of direction. There's nothing as terrible as a man who is clueless about what to do. It can be frustrating when you are clueless. You are at the middle of an ocean and you don't know what to do. But there is the spirit of counsel and mind. The, the dimension of the operation of the spirit that comes and speaks peace to you in the name that is above all names I pray for you that every decision you need to make every direction that you need to take for this second half of your life to truly be the year of the rain I release upon you that dimension of the spirit of counsel and might marital direction financial direction academic direction career direction no more confusion no more confusion no more confusion
Hallelujah. I pray for you. Part of the keys to stepping into the blessings of the Lord is the ability for your eyes to see opportunities. Hagar, listen, Hagar was in a place. It was a desert, but there was water. Her eyes could not see. But when the angel of the Lord appeared unto her, suddenly she saw water. I pray you have been passing water and bless you and you have not been seeing it in this month of May. The anointing that opens the eyes of men to opportunities that can bless you. I release it upon you now. I release it upon you now. Where men see obstacles, may you see opportunities. Where men see stumbling blocks, may you see stepping stones. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear has kept many people from moving forward. Fear of everything. Fear of death fear of failure fear of taking action fear of moving even when god says move you say i'm afraid start that business i'm afraid take a step to marry i'm afraid do this i'm afraid move on further i'm afraid i pray for you in the name of jesus every manifestation of fear every manifestation of fear that has kept your ego on the line that will not allow you soil your hand in destiny to make progress that keeps you from being afraid every manifestation of fear that gives you a feeling of being embarrassed to take a step i cause that fear now i cause that fear now i cause that fear now when they got to the red sea they were afraid and when moses went before the lord he said tell the people to move forward the signs don't go before you they follow you you will have to take a step as a sign that you trust god take the step and die taking it let it be that it was god that killed you there is no man that took a step in the name of the lord that did not return with a testimony for some may trust in horses others may trust in chariots but for us we trust in the name of the Lord and everything we do in the name of the Lord he said whatsoever you do in word and in deed do it in the name of the Lord I pray for you again fear has stopped millionaire businesses from starting up fear has stopped people from applying in places high places they think they are not qualified fear has stopped many of us fear has stopped you from starting the building project who said you are too young so long as god gives you the signal there are some of us all of us are adults in our house but our parents cannot boast of even a simple bungalow because of fear you have ten thousand go and buy a trip of sand and pour it on the ground and leave it here tell the devil i'm coming look let me tell you you will never break through in life Till you take the attitude of if I perish, I perish. I pray the boldness, the audacity, the strength, the audacity to ride through without exhaustion, to ride through without fear. I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. I pray for your academics. Shekete palabata. The ten times better anointing. Ma dekete kete tete keta. Shekete lepa. The distinguishing anointing. I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. Listen. Anyone here or any family here that the devil is eyeing for death that is saying you will not see the next month or the end of this year i declare 
by the mystery of the blood the last card the hallmark of God's victory I judge the manifestation of death over your life I judge the manifestation of death over your family you will travel out and come back safe no armed robber will get you on the road no terrorist will attack you on the road when others say there is a casting down it will never be your testimony for you it will be that there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus I pray over your finances the grace to pay the price now and to pay the price early for a glorious financial future I release it every spirit of laziness every spirit of carelessness every spirit of lukewarmness every inertia every reluctance to begin to take appropriate financial decisions especially for the brothers I cause it to his root now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those trusting God for a miracle job I tell you the truth when the hand of the Lord upon you is upon you there will be a door that is open some of you are standing in for yourself and some for your loved ones I pray in the name that is above all names may God give them supernatural jobs jobs that they will be proud of in the name of Jesus and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren it's one thing to be rich is one thing to be blessed but it's another thing to be honored honor is not something that money can buy I pray for you that mantle of honor that makes you distinguished and rewarded everywhere you go I release it upon you right now your superiors will honor you your contemporaries will honor you your subordinates will honor you even your enemies will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for everything that has died or is dying here I don't care what it is projects that have died ideas that have died dreams that have died I speak to you in the name of Jesus come back to life come back to life visions that have died assignments that have died passions that have died strengths that have died I call it back to life in the name of Jesus every voice you have heard that has killed your dreams every voice you have heard that has killed your potentials the voice of your past the voice of your failure the voice of mediocre the voice of limitation I silence those voices from your life I silence those voices from your life I pray for every ministry represented here greater grace and greater glory greater grace and greater glory I pray for every business represented here greater grace and greater glory I pray for every job represented here greater grace and greater glory I pray for every family represented here greater grace and greater glory I pray for every destiny represented here greater grace and greater glory greater grace and greater glory greater grace and greater glory the Bible says thou anointest my head with oil and it makes my cup to run over there is an anointing that comes upon your head that translates into increase in your life thou anointed my head with oil and that oil makes my cup my source of supply to run over I pray for you the anointing that will give you wisdom the anointing that will give you creativity the anointing that will give you ideas insight concepts strategies for wealth I release it upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ And I pray for you in the name that is above all names every habit every issue every challenge every weight on your life that is eating up your Christian integrity that is eating up your work with God you love God but there are weights in your life that keep drawing you back to the way of sin I pray for you 
the hand of the Lord lifts you out of that nonsense. The grace of God picks you out of that limitation. Grace to say no to every appearance of evil. Grace to say no to everything that is ungodly. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray a special prayer for our brothers. I curse in your life the spirit of irresponsibility. One more time. I curse from your life and your vicinity every spirit that refuses you from rising as a man that you are. That entitlement mentality that makes you think someone else is responsible for your success. I curse that mindset in the name of Jesus. From today I release upon you grace. Grace to rise and take up the challenge of manhood. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. You will not need to defend yourself. The Lord God Almighty will be your defense. The Lord will anoint you in such a way that even your enemies will walk towards your progress. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy restoration for everything you have lost. Restoration. 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 In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray for you. A new dimension in the spirit. A new level of prayer grace. A new level of word grace. A new dimension of encounters with the spirit of God. Where you are becoming lukewarm. Where you are losing the initial standard of your Christian experience. Where you are already bending. Bending against the things that would make you powerful. I pray for a restoration for you. Where you have lost the voice of the spirit. I command that you be to hear his voice again. Where you have lost zeal for the house of God. I command a restoration for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. All through the remaining part of May. Into June. Let it be a month of testimonies for you. Beginning from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. All those who have been looking for you to bless you. May this be the season they find you. All those who have received instructions from God to hold your hands. And lift you up with no strings attached. But have not been able to find you. I pray. Listen. Listen. Samuel had already been ordained. I mean Saul ordained to be a king. But he needed to find Samuel. And they kept searching and he could not find Samuel. Until by the wisdom of God they were able to find him. You can be one anointing away from the next level of your life. You can be one prophetic impartation away. You can be one destiny helper away. I pray again for you. Whoever has been looking for you. Like the lost ass of Samson. Of, of Saul. Whoever has been looking for you to bless you and has not found you, may this be the season they find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Nothing will rob your joy this month. This will be the month of June, will be for you a month of joy and laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before miracle service next month, most of all your prayer requests would have been turned into testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for lifting. 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 My Hallelujah. Now, keep standing everybody you're here and you need to return back to Jesus Christ keep standing everyone you've heard the word of the Lord and you know that you need to make it right with Jesus maybe this is the first time you are running to Jesus genuinely to commit your life to him or you've once given your life to Jesus and you've seen that you are derailing and you need to make it right tonight we will not end this meeting without giving you an opportunity 
to make Jesus Lord of your life or rededicate your life, wherever you are, make your way to the front right now. We have one minute for this. God bless you. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for anybody to be the first to come. Make your way. God bless you. God bless you. They are coming inside and outside. Celebrate them, Koinonia. God bless you as you come. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. God bless you as you come. Don't be ashamed. He will give you a new beginning. And he will supply grace. That you will go higher and higher. Higher and higher. Keep coming. Young and old, keep coming. Run to Jesus. Keep coming. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't sit back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming to make a decision for Jesus. Just raise your right hand and repeat after me consciously and from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. This is, this is a confession that brings salvation unto you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I declare from today that you are my Savior and you are my Lord. I receive of your life. I receive of your spirit. And I declare that from today, my sins are washed away. I am a brand new person. The hand of God is upon me. I receive grace to live the victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that is not of God, I take authority over it. I receive grace from God to live a victorious Christian life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I want to congratulate you for making this decision. It's the best decision you can make. This decides your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. They will have your details. They will welcome you more warmly. And then, we'll communicate to you through them. God bless you. This way. Draw that baby. Baby, this way. No, 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 no. All those who are worshipping with us for the first time, if this is your first time being here worshipping with us at Koinonia, please make your way to the front. You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Celebrate them as they come. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Come on, Koinonia. You can do better than this. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep Hello. sharing abroad and let's all scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. I